How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is option B, Biochemistry Volume 5, where we talk about vitamins, and one of my favorite lines from one of my favorite films was, she takes her vitamins. So let's take ours, let's go. So Volume 5, Vitamins. We look at vitamin solubility, and then we have to have a discussion about the solubility of vitamins. So the IB understandings and applications and skills focus around vitamins and what they are and they basically focus around the fact that some are soluble and some are insoluble and then we also need to compare the structures of vitamins A, C and D which are in the data book. So vitamins are organic micronutrients with diverse functions that must be attained from the diet. Vitamins mostly cannot be synthesized by the body and therefore we have to get them from our food sources. They can be stored in two environments, either in the aqueous environment or in the fat environment. So vitamins are either water soluble or fat soluble. Water soluble vitamins will contain the polar hydroxy groups which can hydrogen bond with water. The greater the degree of OH groups, the larger or the greater the solubility of the vitamin. So if you are asked to compare the solubilities of these vitamins, make sure you refer to the data book and make sure you look for the polar hydroxy groups. So vitamin A has one polar hydroxy group, so one location where it can form hydrogen bonds. The rest of the molecule though is essentially non-polar. It has a large section of an alkene and then it's got a bit of a ring and then it's got some methyl groups which are all non-polar. So we have this tiny little polar head and this very big non-polar section which makes vitamin A insoluble in water. So it will be fat soluble and can be found in the fat stores of the body. If we have a look over to vitamin C, we can see that it has a larger degree of hydroxy groups. It has four hydroxy groups. So this is a much more polar molecule. So because it has a high degree of hydroxide groups, that means it can form a large number of hydrogen bonds with water, which will make this soluble and vitamin C can be passed around in the blood. Vitamin D, again, if we have a look, it's got a backbone that kind of looks a bit like a steroid or a cholesterol backbone. But again, it's got one polar hydroxy group, which means it would be a fat soluble vitamin. And the same with vitamin E. Vitamin E has one polar hydroxy group, while the rest is non-polar. So if we are to compare retinol, which is vitamin A, calciferol, which is vitamin D, and absorbic acid, the major difference in their structures can be seen. Vitamin A and vitamin D are fat soluble because they only contain one hydroxy group, which makes them alcohols, and hence the last name, ol. In contrast, vitamin C, absorbic acid, has a number of different hydroxy groups, so it is very soluble in water. Vitamin C is the little orange tablets that you take when you're feeling a little bit sick, it helps to boost your immune system, but it is an acid, so we can identify that using an acid-based reaction, and I know some of my students have tried to do that in an IA investigation. So have a look down that path if you're interested. Vitamin A and vitamin D, well they belong to the class of compounds called alkanols or alcohols because they contain the hydroxy functional group. Make sure you make that distinction. Vitamin C, again, it does have a large number of hydroxy groups, but it is in fact an acid. It's called absorbic acid, so it has acid base properties. So it can act as an acid and donate a proton to a base, which makes it acidic. It is a weak, a weak acid, so the best way to titrate this is via a back titration. You can also see that vitamin A and vitamin D contain some rings, while vitamin D has a structure that is very similar to cholesterol. Now because vitamins contain several functional groups, especially the hydroxide and the alkene functional groups, they're sensitive to heating. So these can be easily oxidized and destroyed by, destroyed by methods of food processing, and therefore vitamins are best sourced from fresh fruit and vegetables. Now if we live in a developing country, we might have an absence of a regular balanced diet. 
and we need these vitamins to be part of our diet. Now, if we're not getting the right amount of vitamins, that's known as malnutrition. And I've got a summary below which summarizes some of the causes and effects of the nutrient deficiencies. Now, I'm not sure exactly which ones the IB will test you on, but it's best to know a few examples. So the main ones that have come up in the new course are vitamin A, which we've talked about, vitamin C and vitamin D. And we've also looked at proteins earlier in option B. So I would recommend that you remember a few of these deficiencies and a few of the symptoms to try and help you answer those sort of questions. But the suggested solutions to malnutrition are are usually pretty much the same. Let's supply people with fresh fruit and vegetables. We could give them genetically modified foods to increase the amount of vitamins and mineral composition of the foods. Or we could give them nutritional supplements, but by far the best way is to supply them with fresh fruit and vegetables to get minerals out of the food. Okay, so volume five, some top tips. Remember that the structures of these compounds are in the data book, and like I said, I suggest remembering a couple of examples for the symptoms and malnutrition. Thanks for watching guys. If you knew the quote of the, of the movie I was talking about earlier, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you.